The mother of a teenager with anorexia and bulimia says children will die unless the government puts more money and resources into treating eating disorders. The demand for services has more than doubled this year, according to the Eating Disorders Association. And it says children as young as eight are waiting weeks or even months to be seen by specialist services, despite having life-threatening illnesses. It's calling on the government to set up an expert panel to look at ways to boost services. Bridget's teenage daughter got seriously ill in February after dabbling in veganism. She was told the wait list was six months for a publicly funded community treatment programme after initially taking her daughter to a GP. After physically assessing her and so forth, she then said, you know, look, just go home and eat, which to a child that's terrified of food um, is unfortunately not very helpful. I'm sure her heart was in the right place, but it just wasn't terribly helpful. And um, and she unfortunately sent the referral to the wrong place. And I don't think that's her fault. I think some, the GPs need a bit more information and education out there on how to handle these eating disorders and where to refer them to according to their district. Um, it is quite a complicated system from what we found out. Um, you get referred to mental health services first before you get then sent on to a specific eating disorder facility. How hard was it to get into a treatment programme? Um, look, we got, once um, we saw a private psychologist and once the psychologist had sent it to the, the right place, um, we got a phone call saying there was a five to six month waiting list, which broke my heart. And I tried then to access private care and we were also told that that would be an eight-week wait, which watching my daughter, we just didn't have eight weeks. Day by day, you could see the deterioration. Um, so we just were desperate, desperate for help. But um, it got to the point where she had to be admitted to hospital because she got so physically unwell. Um, it is a psychiatric disorder that has severe physical ramifications. So um, we ended up in hospital and that actually escalated us up the list to get into the actual eating disorder specialist um, care. But it also means that it's probably bumped somebody down the ladder as she got bumped up. And that concerns me a lot that somebody else is not getting the care that they deserve. So hang on a minute. You seek help, but your daughter does not get a place on the list until she's absolutely in critical condition and been hospitalised. Well, that's that's been our case. And um, unfortunately, because she's um, 17, she doesn't qualify for Starship Hospital, which have probably more um, specialist treatment for eating disorders, whereas once you're going to deal with this, Um, But yes, it seems to be that you have to have the physical, severe physical criteria for hospital admission to then get bumped up the list. So So yes, that's our experience, yep. Your family sought help from a private psychologist. Obviously, there's there's a cost attached to that. And also, you looked at a private clinic for treatment. I mean, what sort of fees are associated with that when you looked at it? Um, so the psychologist, mostly around the $200 mark. Um, I guess I never really got far down the track with the private eating disorder service, but I would say it would be of, um, you know, similar amount, $200, $250 an hour. These, these people are well qualified and specialised. But, um, you know, while you're waiting to get into um, even public Healthcare, you have to go to your GP twice a week for um, monitoring for blood pressure and heart rate because they get terribly low heart rates and low blood sugars and numerous other physical elements. And, you know, my GP costs $57 a visit. And so that's a lot of money for people to be shelling out twice a week while they're waiting to get the specialist care that they need. How do you... How do you feel about that and the fact that when you initially went, you were told five to six months for the public system? Oh, uh, devastated, absolutely heartbroken. We knew we had a problem. We just didn't know how to deal with it. Um, we needed the help and we it was very hard to see into the future. Um, 
we Bridget, were you recognise our child. Were you scared that your daughter might die if she had to wait that long? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Yep. Very much so. Yep. God, that must it's, have been it's, so it's just, stressful um, as a, for a parent. It, it is a, just a devastating illness, and um, I've obviously <laughs> done a lot of reading now because we've been forced to, and, um, you know, the stats with anorexia um, and it's, it's um, the death rate from anorexia is very, very high in New Zealand. So what? it's, yeah. As you would appreciate, demand for eating disorder services has has well more than doubled. We're being told. What would what would you like yep. to say to the health minister and the people who can make some changes in this area? Oh, we we I mean we we have to fund it. We have to find a way to um, prioritise these kids. There are so many of them, and um, we can't have people being bumped down the waiting list as people who end up in hospital um, take their places and they just deteriorate before your very eyes. Um, there has to be has to be addressed. Um, we've had a rapid increase this year because probably because of COVID um, and we're going to lose kids if they don't seriously look at um, putting some more workers in there and funding it because it's devastating. It's absolutely devastating. How's your family and your daughter doing now? Um, we take it day by day. It's um, it's a real roller coaster. Um, yeah, it's it's tough. It's really really tough. I uh, really had no idea with other people living with us what it was really like. Um, unfortunately, we've found out the hard way. But um, she didn't choose it, we didn't choose it, and we're doing everything we possibly can to um, fight fight for her and, and get her well and get her life back. And that's Bridget, whose teenage daughter is being treated for an eating disorder.